Okay, joining me, my very dear friend, John Katsimatidis, runs the Red Apple Group, Christidis Foods, United Refining Chairman and CEO. And he's got a brand new book out. It's a terrific book. I read it this last weekend. How Far Do You Want to Go? Lessons from a Common Sense Business Billionaire. I love that. Uh, welcome on set, John. We appreciate it very much. Well, thank you, Larry, for having me here. Best uh, love always to Margot, as you know. She's one of the, she's the greatest lady in New York City. John, just quickly, um, a common sense billionaire. It's a great title. What, what are you trying to tell us? What I'm trying to tell everybody is I like America the old-fashioned way. Mm. I like America the way when common sense uh, Democrats, common sense Republicans, they argued all day long, like a, a Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan, which you knew very well, like a uh, Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich. But at the end of the day, instead, of, they went out and drank a few beers and they hugged each other. And that's what common sense is all about. Uh, that uh, we all have to sit uh, down together and do the right thing for our city, our state, our country, and the world. And that's what I'm most concerned about uh, these days, uh, Larry. So you got one more. How about a gubernatorial race? How about it? Well, you know, <laughs> I feel good. Uh, you know, if I keep following Dr. Mihalos's diet, uh, <laughs> maybe I have one more race left. All right, one more race left. So um, you started the great miracle with the supermarkets. You went on to airplanes, oil and gas, real estate. Um, the airplane one didn't. <laughs> that was the only one it didn't really take. Which one? The airplanes. The, uh, well, you know how to make the, the rough business. You, you know how to make a hundred million dollars in the airplane business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you start with a billion dollars, you make it into a hundred million. <laughs> but really, your roots were in the supermarkets, and. Um, I, they may not be the greatest profits. I know it takes up a lot of your time, but you don't want to give them up. Well, uh, we've had them for over 50 years, and uh, a lot of the employees have been with me 30, 40, 30 years, 40 years. Uh, I would say it contributes to almost 0% of our profits <laughs> and maybe 90% of our work. <laughs> but it keeps you close. I, I, I'm streets. loyal to my employees. I'm, I love New York, and uh, Gristini's, D'Agostino has been part of New York for over 100 years, yeah. and I don't want to give it up. All right. Now, let's talk about the oil business, because you are an expert on that. That's a high-profit part of your uh, portfolio. First of all, what are you thinking about the price of oil? You've had a very good track record predicting. Well, right now, the oil was around $75 today. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I didn't look at it at the end of the market. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm predicting, you know, 72 in the next uh, week or so, mm -hmm. 70. If we keep oil down in the 70, 72 area, mm -hmm. then uh, you're going to see inflation start to curb downwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it takes about three, four, five months for food prices to, to follow to go downwards mm -hmm. and fertilizer prices and, and energy prices because right now energy and food are still in a catch-up mode mm -hmm. where they're still catching up when oil was uh, 90, 100, 110. And then you got the other side of the fence. We have uh, uh, the OPEC nation, Saudi Arabia. We have Russia that want $100 oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we said before, oh, Russia is still producing 10 mm -hmm. million barrels a day. Even at $70 a barrel, that's $700 million a day. Mm -hmm. uh, when you multiply it by 365 days a year... It's close to $300 billion. That's $300 billion. It's close to 300. We did this uh, last night. You know, I don't... That look pays for the whole economy. Uh, yeah, that's all he's got, but it also pays for the war, which infuriates me. Look, we, pre-pandemic, we were printing over 13 million barrels a day in the U.S. The Energy Department had predicted we would move in the next few years to 14 to 15 million barrels yes. a day. Now, that would stabilize the price at lower levels. That would make us energy independent again, John. You're heavy into that business. You need permits for pipelines and all the rest of it. But to me, this is um, one of the biggest mistakes that Biden has made. Well, we were doing like 13.1, I think, That's in the right. last month at That's Trump. That's right. And we were going to move up to 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. The Canadian ministers told me that they can go from four and a half up to five and a half. So mm -hmm. we could completely become energy independent in North America. And you know where oil would be? 
65 70 dollars a barrel you know where inflation is going to be zero, zero. and uh, right now we are destroying 20 percent of the uh, of of the economy of the country the real estate industry mm. uh, homes are down to an all-time low uh, construction is going downwards and how do you fix a problem you fix a problem by increasing the oil not creating a new problem in real estate so this is a case, it seems to me, where the Biden administration lacks any common sense at all. A hundred percent correct. I don't want to criticize the president of I'm the United saying, States. I'm not against wind and solar and renewables, and neither are you're you. Not run why the, not have all the above? You're not going to run this country on, uh, on solar and on wind. I'll sell you the Brooklyn Bridge at a good yeah. price if, uh, if, yeah. if anybody believes it out there. Uh, but uh, uh, right now, uh, we need common sense. We have to... Uh, China is moving along at warp speed. Mm. And we're moving along at snail speed. Mm -hmm. And they're going to surpass us. And, and we're creating our own problem. And I, I don't understand why it's we're creating silly. our own problem. It's just silliness. It's, it's this obsession that they have. All right. The name of the book, I'm going to put it up. How far do you want to go? Lessons from a common sense billionaire. I have to say, John Katsimidis is a very dear friend. One last thing. You, have you bought WABC Radio. I don't want to forget that. You've turned it around. It's a tremendous force right now. Uh, I'm grateful to be on it on Saturday mornings. Brian Kilmeade was on it, is on it also. I mean, that's really an amazing thing. I believe in getting the truth out. Uh, two of my uh, great heroes in life, in media, were... Uh, uh, Walter Cronkite, mm -hmm. where 92% of the American people believed him, mm -hmm. not like today. And also Roger Ailes, who uh, took Fox and created something out mm -hmm. of it. So ABC Radio is a force to be reckoned with. Yes, so we want to get the truth out, and uh, we, we respect our, our listeners, and we just want to do the right thing. All right. Well, we got to get you over there. You're on at 5 o'clock. I don't want them yelling at me. Thank you. All the rest of it. Again, let's put the book up on the full screen. It's a very good read. I read it over the weekend uh, coming, to, coming to Florida and back. John Katzmatidis is a very dear friend, and I want to say howdy-do to Margot. Feel better. Thank you, John. Thank you, Larry. You'll, you'll sell a million copies easy.